हेलो माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू सी क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ गियर्स नाउ व्हेन एवर वी क्लासिफाई गियर्स द फर्स्ट क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ गियर इज अकॉर्डिंग टू एक्सेस ऑफ शाफ्ट कनेक्टेड दैट इज अकॉर्डिंग टू एक्सेस ऑफ शाफ्ट कनेक्टेड शाफ्ट्स कनेक्टेड this is the first classification and according to axis of shaft connected we can classify gear into three categories that is number one is both axis are parallel that is parallel axis shafts parallel axis shafts or gears second non parallel non parallel but intersecting but intersecting axes and third is non parallel and non intersecting axes non intersecting axes this is the first classification according to axes of shaft connected now first of all let us understand this first classification and these sub three points then we will go for second classification now here in first classification that is parallel axis shaft there are two types of gears that is number 1 is spur gear and number 2 is helical gear spur gear and helical gear are classified as parallel axis shafts now let us understand the spur gear now here in case of spur gear you can see the diagram the pure rolling motion can be transferred between two mating gears now pure rolling motion means let us say the bigger one is called gear here it is a gear bigger one which is in contact with the another gear which smaller is called pinion smaller gear is called pinion now there are there is a contact between pinion and gear now this is a side view and this is a front view now in front view we can say that if gear is rotating in clockwise direction and for external contact the pinion will rotate in anti clockwise direction right because the common point here this common point is trying to move in forward direction with constant velocity which is nothing but radius of pinion angular velocity of pinion which is nothing but equal to radius of gear into angular velocity of gear that already we have seen in introductory lecture right so as this common point is moving towards right therefore the gear must rotate in clockwise direction and pinion must rotate in anti clockwise direction and it is called rolling motion they are rotating therefore it is called rolling motion and we can see that teeths are cut parallel to the axis now let us say in another view see this is the axis of pinion this is the axis of pinion and here it is the axis of gear axis of gear and here on these there are teeth are cut these are the teeth cut and teeth are parallel to the axis teeth are parallel to the axis and straight means we can say second point which is very important is teeth are straight and parallel to the axis generally the use of spur gear is limited they are not used because there is a instantaneous engagement and disengagement in spur gear there is instantaneous engagement and disengagement we can say instantaneous or we can say sudden sudden engagement and disengagement and this engagement right because of this because of sudden engagement and dis disengagement there are impact stresses on the tooth impact stresses on the tooth and because of this tooth fail earlier than other gears therefore because of these advantages there is sudden engagement therefore there are impact stresses therefore generally spur gears are avoided but for very low power transmission at very low speed spur gear gears are preferred note down this statement at very low power transmission at very low speed spur gears are preferred for example watches in watches spur gears are preferred now if you have a hand watch right then you can if if you open this watch in this watch all the gears are spur gears now 
here for axis the t circuit parallel like this the t circuit parallel like this and whenever load acting on this gear the load is perpendicular to the teeth this is a load therefore we can say there is a load along radial direction only it is called radial load fr is radial load and the component of this total load will not come along axial direction therefore axial load in case of spur gear is zero this is main advantage here this is main advantage that that is axial load which is called thrust this is also called axial thrust or thrust in case of spur gear thrust is zero but yes there is radial load because of contacting surfaces there is radial load because of contact surfaces hence the main points regarding spur gear are the number one is there is a rolling motion that is one gear is rotating other is also rotating and teeth are cut parallel and straight to the axis straight and parallel to the axis right but this disadvantage is that there is a impact stresses so there, because of sudden engagement and disengagement there are impact stresses therefore the teeth fails easily hence generally the use of spur gear is, gear is avoided and the use is limited for very low power transmission and at very low speed for example watches and in case of spur gear there is only radial load and axial load is zero now to eliminate the problem of spur gear that is there is sudden engagement and disengagement because of this there are impact stresses now to eliminate this problem helical gears are used and in case of helical gear the teeth are cut at an angle with axis see here for axis if i consider this is a axis this is a axis and here this is a axis of gear axis of gear and pinion now the teeth are cut at an angle with axis see the teeth are cut inclined to the axis right here you can see the teeth are cut at an inclination to the axis in both view we can see now because of this inclination or helical angle this is called helix angle because of this helix angle the, there is a gradual engagement and disengagement because of this gradual engagement and disengagement we can say gradual engagement as well as disengagement and because of this impact stresses are eliminated impact stresses are eliminated there are no impact stresses and my dear students if you observe here carefully there are, if i cut threads if i cut right hand thread on the pinion then compulsory for meshing we need left hand thread on the gear right see here you can see let us consider there is a pinion and gear in contact larger one is gear this is the axis of gear this is the axis of pinion right now if i cut right hand threads that is going downward towards right right hand thread means going downward towards right right these are we can say right hand thread on pinion then on gear compulsory the threads must be left hand that is going downwards towards left this is left hand thread on gear then only there is meshing possible right you can see here on pinion right hand thread on gear there are left hand threads now because of this right hand and left hand thread one problem arises that is the load acting on the thread is perpendicular like this this is applied load and for this applied load we will get two components that is one component along axial direction and one component along radial direction right there will be a radial load also and there will be a axial load also therefore this axial load is called thrust means in case of helical gear there will be a radial load as well as there will be thrust load and this is the disadvantage of helical gear now so main points of helical gear are the axes are parallel here you can find the axes are parallel and teeth are cut straight and inclined to the axes and the inclination is called helix angle or helical angle and for here the main advantage we will get that because of this helical angle there will be a gradual engagement and disengagement and because of this impact stresses are eliminated completely eliminated we can say but 
on pinion if there are right hand thread then on gear compulsory there must be left hand thread and vice versa and because of this inclination of threads there will be a axial load as well as radial load this is a disadvantage now to overcome this disadvantage of axial thrust or thrust we are using double helical gear which is also called herringbone gear now here you can see double helical or herringbone gear in case of double helical or herringbone gear see the left hand right hand thread are in contact like this right left hand and right hand threads are in contact like this this is the only pinion or let us say only gear here only one device is shown not an assembly right here you can see these are the right hand threads and as well as left hand threads means the gears are connected like this let us say this is one gear on which there are right hand threads now in contact with this immediately there will be another gear which will be having left hand threads they are will they will be in contact right this will be axis of them now because of this the thrust problem is eliminated that is axial load problem is eliminated now see here if i see axial load on the gears see on this gear there will be a load like this perpendicular to teeth and on this gear the load will be like this perpendicular to teeth now consider any one load for this load let us say f there will be one radial component fr and there will be one axial component fa and for another load for another load this there will be one radial component which is fr and there will be one axial component fa right now look at the diagram my dear students here the effect of axial load on one gear is cancelled by axial load on another gear you can see here effect of axial load towards right on one gear is cancelled by effect of axial load on another gear towards left and radial loads will get added therefore for double helical gear or herringbone gear axial load is also present radial load is also present but the effect of axial load we can say effect of axial load gets cancelled each other gets cancelled each other therefore in case of double helical gear or herringbone gear both loads are present but axial loads cancels each other therefore the net axial load we can say the net axial load is zero yes there is a axial load but the net axial load is zero hence double helical gear is used to avoid the problem of thrust which is called thrust now the second type according to axis of shaft is non parallel but intersecting axis in this non parallel but intersecting axis there is a bevel gear bevel gear again this bevel gear is classified as straight bevel gear straight bevel gear another is zeroal bevel gear zeroal bevel gear and spire helical bevel gear helical bevel gear right these are the three classifications now straight bevel gear and zeroal bevel gear are almost same these are almost same right now let us understand the bevel gear now here for bevel gear the axes are non parallel but as well as they are intersecting and generally the angle between axes is perpendicular that is 90 degree that is 90 degree generally 90 degree angle is used but yes sometimes less than 90 or more than 90 is also used but rarely right so most of the time in bevel gear the power is transmitted at 90 degree and the motion is rolling motion only pure rolling they are rotating now in case of bevel gear in straight bevel gear and zero all bevel gear the teeth are straight and parallel to the axis of rotation like spur gear like spur gear the teeth are straight and parallel to the axis of rotation and in case of helical gear the teeth are straight and inclined to the axis of rotation like helical gear but in spur gear and helical gear axes were parallel but in case of spur gear, bevel gear axes are non parallel and intersecting you can see here see there is one 
conical gear this is a conical gear and another gear right now their angle between them is 90 degree see axis of one gear see this is a one axis and there is a another axis and angle between them is 90 degree generally it is 90 degree but we can use more than 90 as well as less than 90 but generally it is 90 degree therefore whenever we want to transfer power at 90 degree or angular velocity at 90 degree here it is a angular velocity rotating and here it is a angular velocity rotating means if you want to rotate the gears at 90 degree angle then such type of arrangements are used bevel gears are used now whenever angular velocity ratio that is omega 1 let us say here omega 1 omega 2 let us say if i consider there is one gear like this one gear like this and this is axis and there is another gear in contact with this like this and this will be axis right now let us say this is the first gear rotating with angular velocity omega 1 this is the second gear rotating with angular velocity omega 1 whenever this angular velocity ratio omega 1 divided by omega 2 is equal to 1 that means angular velocity is not changing here means it is neither speed reducing or neither speed increasing gear it is only used to transfer power at 90 degree such a type of gear is called metric gear metric gear this is a metric gear right metric gear is not increasing or decreasing the speed or angular velocity it is only transferring the power at 90 degree and in case of other omega 1 divided by omega 2 is constant but not equal to 1 means it is speed reducing or speed increasing gear bevel gear and in case of bevel gear pure rolling motion is transferred means rotation is converted into rotation right but at 90 degree this is important now the third type in the first classification category is non parallel and non intersecting axes in case of non parallel and non intersecting axes pure rolling is impossible we can say pure rolling is impossible means not possible but yes rolling is possible means pure rolling is impossible means with rolling that is with rotation there is a partial translation also or sliding also partial sliding or translation is also yes rolling is possible rotation means rolling rolling is possible but there is a partial sliding also my dear students there is a partial sliding not slipping it is not slipping it is not equivalent to slipping it is only partial sliding right therefore in case of axis non parallel and non intersecting axis pure rolling is impossible there is partial sliding also with rolling for example spiral gears for example spiral gears these are also called skew bevel gears spiral gears are called skew bevel gears right such as for example hypoid gear hypoid gear therefore hypoid gear is an example of non parallel and non intersecting axes now here you can see hypoid gear see this is a pinion and this is a gear and the power is transmitted like this it is also called this gear is also called skew bevel gear or spiral gear skew bevel gear or spiral gear now see axis the axis of pinion is like this and axis of gear will be like this my dear students in this 3d view you are imagining that axis are intersected but not because this axis of pinion is passing below this axis right in here in side view you can see in another view here we can see the axis is here for gear the axis is here inward it is going in your mobile from this point right it is going in mobile from this point and axis of pinion is here this is axis of pinion means between axes see here angle between them is 90 degree but they are not intersecting angle between them is 90 degree but they are not intersecting there is an offset there is offset provided between pinion and gear which is nothing but crown the gear is called crown remember this right and this is non parallel and non intersecting axes now the another example of 
axis are non parallel and non intersecting is that warm and warm wheel we can say warm and warm wheel now here you can see here warm which is rotating like this rotation also provided and you can see warm wheel here warm wheel which is also rotating now here the axis is are perpendicular see axis of warm is here and axis of will be here and going inside your mobile or your laptop or your ipad whatever may be the device you are using to watch this lecture going inside this device and here this is horizontal on the device therefore that is here we can say it is a z axis it is a x axis right therefore the axis are perpendicular but not intersecting here axis are not intersecting right now generally generally warm is a threaded screw here warm is a threaded screw right and this warm and warm wheel is famous for very high speed reduction generally its purpose is speed reduction right that is speed reduction or we can say very high speed reduction it is very much fam famous for very high speed reduction such as for example it is used in guitar tightening you might have seen guitar while playing guitar right now if i want to tighten the guitar strings then this mechanism warm and warm wheel is used also you might have seen this in juicer right this warm and warm wheel this mechanism you will find in juicers right and it is it is very much famous for very high speed reduction now among all the gears or among all the gear drives warm and warm wheel provides maximum speed reduction this is very important my dear students and this warm wheel imposes high radial load on the shaft right this is also important point in case of warm wheel there is high radial load on the shafts now in case of warm and warm wheel we can say the plane of rotation is different see here in this case warm is rotating about x axis and wheel is rotating about z axis right the plane of rotation is different again very famous arrangement is that rack and pinion rack and pinion arrangement my dear students pinion means having lesser diameter now see here this is a rack this is a rack that is gear with infinite diameter we can say gear with infinite diameter means as it is having infinite diameter there is no rotation there is only linear motion the rack is moving only linearly right there is only translation motion for the rack and my dear students the pinion is rotating this pinion is rotating here it is a pinion right pinion is rotating now let us consider if i assume let us say the pinion is rotating in clockwise direction let us say this is my assumption for the pinion if pinion is rotating like this then rack will go towards left this will be the motion of rack and if pinion is rotating in anti clockwise direction like this then rack will go towards right this will be the motion right means in case of rack and pinion the translation is transferred to linear motion or oh, sorry rotation here the rack is moving in translation translation that is linear motion and pinion is rotation under rotation therefore whenever i want to transfer translation into rotation or rotation into translation then rack and pinion assembly is used and here pinion is rotating and rack is having translational motion because the larger is called gear smaller is called pinion and the larger one is a rack of infinite diameter rack is a gear with infinite diameter now the second classification is according to type of gearing according to type of gearing in first classification we have seen according to axis of shaft in second classification we will see according to type of gearing now basically there are two types that is external gearing external gearing and other is internal gearing second is internal gearing now whenever contact is externally then it is called external gearing let us say it is a gear now there is a pinion right the larger is called gear and the smaller is called pinion 
and if i see the another view another view the gear will be having some thickness let us say this is the gear and it is a pinion they are in contact in mesh and this is the axis of gear and pinion let us say it may be a spur gear or it may be a helical gear or any other arrangement now here for external gearing if gear rotates in clockwise direction see this is a clockwise rotation for gear then pinion will rotate in anti clockwise direction right means there is a opposite rotation for external gearing there will be opposite rotation because the common contacting point will move in same direction because of this there will be a opposite rotation right and this is how side view is shown or represented now second type is internal gearing now for internal gearing one gear is let us say the larger one is called here ring or annular and the smaller inside this is pinion let us say this is the center of larger and this is the center of smaller now the side view is represented like this the larger larger is shown like this this is the larger and this is the axis of larger and smaller is represented like this and this is the axis of smaller right and here in case of internal gearing smaller is called pinion always smaller is pinion and in case of internal gearing the larger or bigger is called annular or it is also called a ring it is also called ring and the side view represented is like this like this if such type of arrangement you will see in exam then it is a internal gearing and if such type of arrangement you will see then it is a external gearing and my dear students for internal gearing the common contacting point will move in same direction therefore whenever gear annular or ring is rotating in clockwise then pinion is also rotating in clockwise means here the rotation is same for internal gearing the rotation is in same direction for external gearing the rotation is, is in opposite direction now again if more than one gear is mounted on same shaft it is called compound gear compound gear means on one shaft on one shaft more gears more gears right and that you are going to see in theory of machine topic that is gear train in gear train you will learn this compound gearing there is a simple gear train compound gear train right there is a epicyclic gear train right these all gear trains you are going to learn in theory of machine topic right if on one shaft many gears are used then it is called compound gearing now during power transmission the smaller gears are made as drivers let us say this is smaller which is nothing but pinion and larger which is nothing but gear now during power transmission the generally pinion is made as driver because power is nothing but power is nothing but torque into angular velocity into angular velocity right now see let us say for larger gear radius is r1 and angular velocity is omega1 for smaller gear radius is r2 and angular velocity is omega 2 and already we have seen that r1 omega 1 is equal to r2 omega 2 now as r1 is more than r2 then omega 1 must be less than omega 2 right means larger gear having larger smaller gear is having more angular velocity angular velocity is more for smaller gear right and power is nothing but torque into angular velocity therefore if angular velocity increases then torque required decreases right now torque required is nothing but input torque required is nothing but input therefore for power transmission generally pinion or smaller gear is made as a driver so that the input torque required to drive the gear is less or minimum right now exception is there for every case there is always exception exception is that bicycle bicycle my dear students in case of bicycle the power is given or torque is given to the larger because to minimize the pedal rotation or to minimize human fatigue right if power is see who is given power in bike in case of bicycle your legs are giving power to the pedal and pedal is rotating at larger radius 
pedal is rotating at larger radius why because if pedal is rotating at minimum radius then number of rot as number of rotation increases then your pedal moment also increases because of this in case of bicycle to decrease human fatigue only the power is given or the torque is given to the bigger one but if torque is given to the smaller one lesser torque is required right now observe any vehicle the vehicle having bigger pedal requires more effort to run and vehicles with very small pedal requires very small force or very small torque to run now the selection of gears depends on the various parameters let us say first is if shafts are parallel if shafts are parallel then we have two types that is we can use spur gear or we can use helical gear right now helical spur gear is cheaper and helical gear is little bit costlier but in case of spur gear due to sudden engagement and disengagement there are impact stresses and in case of helical gear this problem is eliminated there is there is a gradual engagement therefore there is no impact stresses that already we have discussed now therefore for high speed power transmission with parallel shafts helical gears are used right and again for velocity ratio velocity ratio up to 6 is to 1 then we can use spur gear or helical gear right whenever velocity ratio is 6 is to 1 then generally spur and helical gears are used which may be extended up to 10 is to 1 also but in rare cases generally it is 6 is to 1 in rare cases we can extend this velocity ratio up to 10 is to 1 now the second is when shafts are intersecting shafts are intersecting at 90 degree at 90 degree then we have bevel gears then we have bevel gears bevel gears are used whenever shafts are intersecting and at 90 degree the shaft the intersection is 90 degree or sometimes less than 90 or more than 90 is also preferred right but in case of bevel gear the velocity ratio is 1 is to 1 means velocity ratio is very small means here only power is transmitted at 90 degree but up to some extent velocity ratio can be increased up to 3 is to 1 also in case of bevel gear third point need to be considered is whenever shafts are non parallel non parallel and non intersecting non intersecting and angle between them is 90 degree means angle between the shafts is 90 degree but they are not intersecting as angle is there they are not parallel also then we are using warm and warm wheel that is warm gears warm and warm wheel and for very high speed reduction that is velocity ratio up to 60 is to 1 that means for very high speed reduction we can use warm and warm wheel and up to some extent the velocity ratio can be increased up to 100 is to 1 means very very high speed reduction in case of warm and warm wheel now in theory of machine many times they have asked question on velocity ratio find out velocity ratio and which gear you will prefer for this arrangement they are asking now if velocity ratio is more than less than 10 is to 1 then we have to go for shafts and uh, that is spur and helical gear if velocity ratio is more less than 3 to 1 then we have to go for bevel gears and if velocity ratio is more than 6 or let us say more than 20 15 that is generally the warm and warm wheel is used for 60 to 1 but let us say if velocity ratio is 20 to 1 then we have to use warm and warm wheel or warm gears thank you dear students in next lecture we will see gear terminology